and peace to you, church. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, welcome to worship with Amity Presbyterian Church. I'm Reverend Megan Argerbright, and I am so glad to be with you this morning. No matter who you are, no matter where you have come from, or what label or name the world has given you, here you are called beloved child of God. And you are a child of God because you were made by a God who loves you and you are fully known by a God who loves you. So before we enter fully into our time and space of worship this morning, I'm gonna let you know of a few important things. Next Sunday, that's September 20th, we will worship under the trees again at church at 9.30 in the morning. You are invited to bring a lawn chair if you have one. If you don't, we will find one for you. Wear your mask and we will continue to keep a safe and careful distance as we gather so that we can all worship safely and joyfully. And invite a friend. There are lots of folks out there right now who are longing for community. Maybe they are missing their own faith community. Um, and this is a wonderful chance to welcome folks into our family, um, whether it's for one Sunday or many Sundays. It's a great chance. So let them know that we are gathering safely and that you would like them to be there. A couple of things about that day in worship. First, we will be welcoming new members into Amity Church during that service. So be sure to be here to joyfully welcome Tanisha and Charles and Tashonda and little Olivia and Aaron as they join the church next week. We will also be entering next week into a new uh, worship series. And that series is gonna be called Moving Out of Scare City, where we're gonna tackle the places that scarcity, if you hear the play on words, that scarcity and fear creep into the church and into our lives and, and keep us holding on or tucking away the gifts that God has given us. And we'll move together with God from scare city into the abundance and freedom that giving to God brings. All right, church, let's turn our hearts and our minds toward God as we shift into the space of worship this morning. I invite you to close your eyes just for a minute and take some deep breaths. And as you breathe in and out, give thanks to God for the air that is moving through your lungs. Give thanks to God for your lungs for your heart that's beating. Give thanks to God for all those miracles that are happening in your body right this very moment. And welcome God's presence into every corner of your being. Church, let's sing together for our call to worship. We're gonna sing a song, Come Just As You Are. and 
This morning, church, let's talk honestly about lament and faith. Lament is a churchy word that can be unfamiliar to those who haven't been hearing it their whole lives in church. So let's define it to make sure that we're not speaking coded language. Lament is a passionate expression of grief. Grief over something or someone lost. Grief over a lived experience or an injustice. And it's usually an outward expression. Often using words or art or music. It's felt in the body. It is grief embodied. It's a crying out, an experience shared by all of humanity. And then when lament is joined with faith, that lamenting is turned toward God. And even though it's an experience that every one of us has had or will have at some point, the truth is that we tend to not make space for it in worship. We prefer to keep our lamenting behind closed doors or locked up in our hearts and our bodies. Thinking that what God wants from us in worship is the best version of ourselves. And I don't know if it's afraid, it's because we're afraid to lament openly before God or maybe that we are afraid to lament openly in front of other people. But whatever the reason, we tend to resist it. It seems like it's in our DNA to resist that open grieving, that open lamenting. And that pressure is so strong that it's not uncommon for someone who has recently had someone close to them die to say things like, I can't go back to church yet. I'm a mess. Maybe you have said that before. Beloveds, if there is anywhere that you are allowed to be a mess, it is in church. It is among your siblings in Christ. Jesus welcomes messes. And he doesn't just welcome those of us who call ourselves messes or who find ourselves in that place. He doesn't just welcome us. He calls us and he sends us mess and all. He calls us, he welcomes us, and he sends us even when we are a total mess. Even when the world around us is an absolute mess and we are a broken hearted people living in a broken world. So I wanted to talk about this today because so often we don't, even though we all experience it, we don't talk enough about the truth of it. And when we lament the state of the world, when we are brokenhearted and crying out to God, that expression of faith, because it is an expression of faith, if we didn't have faith, we wouldn't care. But that expression of faith belongs in worship and in the church. Scripture gives us so many examples of God's people lamenting. There's even a whole book in the Bible called Lamentations, written by the prophet Jeremiah, who was known as the weeping prophet. So this morning, we are going to turn to the Psalms to guide us in our lamenting. There's all kinds of Psalms, Psalms of praise, Psalms of ascension that are like pilgrimage Psalms for a faith journey. But then there are these psalms of lament. And these psalms, all of these psalms, they express the full breadth of the human experience. And if you have ever 
said to yourself and wondered if anyone has ever felt like you are feeling, I promise you that there is a psalm for you. So the Psalms of Lament, there's a lot of those in the book of Psalms. There are Psalms of Lament expressing communal, corporate grief, the grief of the whole people of God. And then there are individual Psalms of Lament. And we're gonna hear one of those individual ones today. Psalm 42 is the one that we are going to encounter together this morning. So church, listen for the word that God has for us today from Psalm 42. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Who, when can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night. While people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar, deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my savior and my God. Church, this is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You see, church, grief and sorrow, it's all part of the human experience. But the lament, that outward expression of grief that is actually healthy and necessary, turning that pain toward God in prayer or in ritual is a faithful response to the hurt that we carry. It's good to make space in our lives for it. And it's good to be intentional about giving that lament shape and form, about practicing it. Our country has just gone through this week a collective lament as we marked the anniversary of September 11th, where nearly 3,000 people lost their lives in an unthinkable, horrific act of terror. And so now each year, just cruising through that day without acknowledging it or stopping to mark that day feels wrong. We need to share in that experience with each other again. And we need to acknowledge the pain that we came through together and the pain that so many still carry. Church, there's a whole lot to lament right now. So much so that it can overwhelm us. There's devastating wildfires. 
almost 200,000 Americans dead from the pandemic. And that's just Americans, 200,000. The collective lamenting of injustice and inequity throughout our country, the grief that many of you are experiencing of losing a loved one, the grief of being separated from our loved ones, the loss of contact, of human touch, of our usual ways of gathering and doing life and being together. We're grieving the loss of health, of mobility, of cognitive function, for the loss of precious time. Friends, these losses and so many more, they are real. And we must give voice to our grief and sorrow. Because if we don't, if we just gloss over them or burying them down or keep pressing forward, when we bury them down and cover them up, they will find their way out of our mouths as rage and fear. I think we are all seeing that happen to people we love, to ourselves, to our community, our country. Sorrow and grief is coming out as rage and fear. So what, what do the faithful people of scripture have to teach us about lament? What can we learn from the Psalms, especially about lament? First, we learn that pain and hurt, church, pain and hurt are not foreign to the people of God. They are part of our experience too. In other words, experiencing real grief does not mean that you are being unfaithful. Second, we learn that crying out to God, asking God why, and how long, O oh Lord, is a faithful response. And if you, like many of us, still feel that sense of guilt that creeps in about lamenting before God and others, if you still feel that, remember that Jesus lamented too. Take this cup from me. Why have you forsaken me? This is an experience shared by all of humanity. Jesus, God in the flesh included. So we learn that pain and hurt are not foreign to the people of God. We learn that crying out to God is an acceptable and faithful response. Third, we learn that naming what is broken must happen. It must come before healing. That's true for each of us as individuals and for us as the people of God. It's true for us as a church and for us as a country. We must name out loud what is broken. And finally, we learn from scripture that we can still worship God. We can still praise God, whether we have a smile on our face or whether we are worshiping through our wailing and our tears. We can still worship God. Because you see, church, God's presence is not dependent on us keeping ourselves together. Thank God for that. It's not dependent on us. God draws near to us. God dwells with us because God chooses to do so out of God's great love for us. If we are hiding our hurt and our grief away, if we are brushing it off, glossing it over, 
tucking it away. We are missing out on the fullness, the fullness of what God offers us in relationship. And that is being fully known and fully loved. But that doesn't come natural to most of us humans. <laughs> it just doesn't. And that's why lamenting is a practice. It's not just an experience, it's also a practice. It's something we can learn to do by practicing it. So this morning, I want to invite you to lament with me. I'm gonna guide us through a prayer where I will begin phrases and then I will leave space and time for you to finish them, to complete them. And guided by our Psalm for today, these phrases will invite us both into praise and into lament. So take all the time that you need with this. It's more than just to fill in the blank, though that's a great place to start, but you can use all the words that you have, all the tears, all the emotions, your body, all that you have to enter into this prayer. If you need more time, just press pause on the video and take all the time that you need. You can write your prayers down. You can name them out loud. You can shout them or sing them if you need to. Maybe words don't come. Express through tears, through shouts, Whatever God has placed in your heart, that is what will come and that is what you will pray. You can't do this wrong, church. And do it knowing that God is so very close, holding you, weeping with you, loving you and your broken heart. So church, let's pray. I know that you are. Today, I find myself feeling I look around and I see
I confess that I... I cry out to you with the question I believe, Lord, that you will. your own song of lament. Take time to offer any prayers that you have not mentioned yet that's on your heart this morning. is one and say together our family prayer that Jesus gave us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beloveds, the Psalms were sung, and so we will sing. We're gonna sing the hymn, Be Still My Soul. And it's the traditional hymn, but there's an extra chorus that has been added that is really beautiful that we can learn together. So let's praise God with song.
Amen, church. As we go, as we prepare to move from this space of worship and out into the world with our hearts and ourselves, I want to invite you, as God invites us, to give and to live differently from this point on. Of course, there are ways to give to God through Amity Church. Uh, you can give financially, either mail in your gift to the church um, or give online is a great way to give as well through our website. Um, and I wanna take this, this moment to thank you, to thank all of you who have given, especially to our COVID relief fund. I want you to know how much of a difference those gifts have made. Um, that even though our physical doors have closed, Amity is still being the church. We are still caring and loving our neighbors. So that fund alone has allowed Amity to serve our neighbors and to love our neighbors with things like paying utility bills, buying groceries, paying rent and mortgage payments, covering emergency housing, paying for health insurance, the list goes on and on for these very real needs that Amity is able to meet because of your generosity. God has multiplied and transformed your money into saving grace for many, many people. So I celebrate and thank God for your generosity. So continue to give because there is more of God's work to do. In addition to our financial gifts, um, we are still collecting school supplies for our students, for the, for the children in our neighborhood um, who may need some of those things at home as they are learning virtually. So you can drop those by the church. There's a bin outside the office or bring them to um, worship under the trees next week. And we are also continuing to collect non-perishable food for the food ministry that is just getting started at Amity. And that is going to be an ongoing need. So whenever you are at the store, pick up some extra things um, and set those aside for the shelves of Amity's pantry. So of course, church, you can give in all of those ways, but remember to give your heart to God by giving your heart to each person that you cross paths with this week. Give your heart, open yourself up to love and be loved as you go about your days. And church, go from this place knowing that you are so very loved and you are never alone. Never, not one moment of this are you alone. So until we gather again, know that God goes with you and let's sing our benediction song, Go. Peace, church.